We have already alluded to possible penalties that taxpayers may confront for failure to comply with various IRS rules. In this section, we'll discuss several IRS taxpayer penalties. For example, there are penalties for early withdrawals and excess contributions to certain tax-favored savings accounts. There's a penalty for workers who fail to report their tip income to the IRS. There is, unsurprisingly, a penalty for failing to file or pay taxes on time. First, let's discuss the penalty for underpayment of taxes. Taxpayers are subject to an underpayment penalty if the total of combined withholding and estimated tax payments does not equal 90% of the tax calculated on the current return or 100% of the tax shown on the previous return. The IRS does not require the taxpayer to calculate the penalty. Instead, the IRS will calculate the penalty and bill the taxpayer for payment. As long as the return was filed on time and the penalty is paid by the due date shown on the bill, no interest will be charged on the penalty. However, if the bill is not paid timely or the return was sent in late, the penalty will include interest on the underpaid amount for the number of days the payment is late, charged at the federal rate for underpayments. Federal interest rate tables are adjusted regularly and are available online at the IRS website. The penalty is calculated using Form 2210. Since estimated tax payments are supposed to be made in four equal installments, notice that Form 2210 asks the client to report the amount of their payments for each quarter. It is possible to have paid the appropriate amount of tax for the entire year, but if any installment was late, a penalty is charged for that quarter from the installment due date to the payment date. However, the IRS will not penalize taxpayers in the following two circumstances, known collectively as the safe harbor rule. The tax due on the return after subtracting amounts already withheld is less than $1,000 and the taxpayer is a U.S. citizen and had no tax liability in the previous tax year on a return that covered 12 months. Since there is no underpayment penalty if a client owes less than $1,000 after computing their return, one of your goals as a professional tax preparer is to help your clients adjust their withholding and or their estimated tax payments so that the tax owed or the refund due is between $1,000 either way. It can be just as important to help them avoid an excessive refund. There is no reason to give the IRS more of your client's money than needed. Why give them money that your client could be using during the year? Your counsel will focus on what proper withholding or estimated tax payments should be. Some taxpayers will use their refund as a forced savings plan. Help your clients see that money held year-round by the IRS does not earn interest, even if it is eventually refunded. This can be another way of making yourself valuable to clients. The general rule is to encourage the $1,000 limit on both taxes owed and refunds due. Just as there is a penalty for underpayment of estimated taxes, there is also a penalty for filing the return late and or making the tax payment late. In many cases, the failure to file and the failure to pay the tax go hand in hand. If both the failure to file and the failure to pay penalties apply in a month, the penalties can get expensive quickly. Basically, the same exceptions exist for not paying penalties as they do for underpayment. There are also accuracy-related penalties if it can be shown that the inaccuracy was due to negligence, disregard of the rules or regulations, substantial understatement of income tax, substantial valuation overstatement of deductions, or understatement of income. According to IRS definitions, negligence means a failure to make a reasonable attempt to comply with the law or exercise ordinary and reasonable care in preparing a return. This can also mean failure to keep adequate records or perform proper bookkeeping. The term disregard means any careless, reckless, or intentional disregard. Occasionally, clients will attempt to involve their tax professionals in fraudulent behavior. Much more common is a failure to use adequate written records of amounts claimed for income or for certain deductions and credits. Even though you work for the client and are dependent on the information the client provides, the IRS instructs tax preparers not to rely on third-party representations if they have reason to believe they are wrong. In any case, 
you should always warn your clients that they must be able to document everything they assert on the return. A lack of documentary evidence in the event of an audit will force the IRS to reject practically anything a taxpayer claims, even if it is legitimate. By the way, tax penalties paid to the IRS are not deductible. If you receive interest from the IRS, it should be reported as income. For full details relating to all penalties, see the workbook. Now, you have seen from a tax preparer's point of view the entire process of preparing a tax return. The workbook provides great descriptions, examples, and details of how this is done. Now it is time to move on to the next module, where we will be discussing important business concepts that you need to know.